Welcome to our weekly Forex forecast, and this is for trading on uh, or for the week of May 31st to June 4th, 2021. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. As usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar here. So in terms of uh, data that's coming up, so just keep in mind here, it's bank holiday on Monday. So we may have um, in UK as well in the US. So the US session may be a little light. Um, so low volume, which means the prices may not move very much. So just watch out for that. And then manufacturing PMI numbers, these are important because they're precursors to retail sales. So if they come in better than expected, we're likely to see a positive impact there. Uh, Reserve Bank of Australia rate statement. So with the um, with the central bankers here, what we are seeing is um, a, a bit of a move towards tightening the monetary policy, or at least talking about tightening the monetary policy. So we saw Reserve Bank of New Zealand hinted on that. And then if we see Reserve Bank of Australia sort of move in the same direction, that will be positive for Australian dollar. And on Tuesday, we have a whole bunch of uh, PMI numbers here from the Eurozone. So any of the positive numbers here, or if the numbers come in above expectations, that would be positive for Euro. Uh, now we do have OPEC meetings here. So this will be important for oil as well as the Canadian dollar, because um, if we see any sort of talk about the production, uh, loosening production uh, quotas or increasing the production that will be negative for oil, which means negative for Canadian dollar. Um, but if we see that they hold on to the production um, production quotas they had put in place, so that will be a positive thing for oil and as a result for um, Canadian dollar. We do have uh, GDP numbers here for Canada for the month and looks like there's expected to be better than the previous numbers. If that's the case, this, this will be good for Canadian dollar. And also ha we have PMI numbers here for the US. Like I said, these are very important. And if these numbers are going up, that is a positive sign. And we can actually see, we are likely to see a positive impact for the stock market here as a result of that, um, just because that will show that the economy is doing better. And then we have uh, Bank of England, Governor Bailey speaking. So again, the focus will be on any sort of language around um, around raising interest rates, not right now, but in the future um, and tightening of the monetary policy there. Um, we have uh, GDP numbers here for Australia. Again, if they come in higher than expectations, that would be a positive sign. Tons of data here on Wednesday but nothing that is huge. We do have Reserve Bank of Australia here, but after their statement, this may not have as much of an impact, uh, but we do need to keep an eye on any of these Fed members or central bankers speaking because any sort of, uh, um, any comments that, um, that talk about tightening monetary policy will be positive for the currency. And same thing here, lots of PMI numbers uh, for Eurozone here. So any PMI numbers that are, um, that are positive or above expectations will have a positive impact on um, the currency as well. Uh, services PMI numbers, very important here. Looks like they're supposed to be moving higher. So again, these PMI numbers will have a positive impact on the stock market for the US. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, now, keep in mind, this is the first uh, first Friday of the month, so we have non-farm payroll numbers. Um, so Friday looks like could be a very volatile day. Here we have ECB, um, we have Swiss National Bank, so we have ECB, uh, and then we have Fed. So with all these, because of the G7 meeting, so with all these central bankers talking, expect volatility, and then at the open of the US session here, we have Canadian employment numbers, but more importantly, we have the US employment numbers here. So if the employment numbers are moving in the right direction, that will be good for, um, again, the stock market. Um, and we are likely to see it go higher. So, by, so right now, uh, so anyway, full on Friday. So we'll have to be careful uh, on Friday because there may be a lot of volatility here. 
All right, so let's move on to our charts here. We'll start off with the euro dollar. Um, with the euro here, euro is at an important level, price is right into resistance here. So at this point, if we just were to zoom back, so this is where uh, price is struggling and it has struggled at this level several times before. So today or this week's candle close here is neutral. So over the last um, couple of weeks or two, three weeks here, price has been trading in this range. So price wasn't able to really go through it, tried to break through, but failed. Um, and now we have a neutral candle, which means we could see a turnaround. So watch out for that. Um, so in this case, uh, the bias here is neutral and but watch out for a bit of a pullback and then um, if it but overall though if it doesn't go through the high we are looking for a drop so um, the highs would be a good level to watch and then in this case the target would be 1.2125 1 um, and then 1.2060 so neutral bias here for euro dollar Pound here, pound hasn't been able to go through the resistance. Um, it hasn't broken through last week's high. However, it's still holding, um, holding on to that bullish bias and we could see a move higher. So for this one as well, bias is neutral. The, uh, the candle close here isn't that strong, uh, but if it does manage to break through the resistance, we are, the chances are really high. It will go hit the high here. So in this case, still looking neutral. Um, the euro candle showed more um, more neutral bias than this one does. This one still has bullishness in it. So neutral to bullish bias, but bullish will only be if it turn goes through the resistance. And then the target would be 1.4380. But for this one as well, I would look out for a potential turnaround here um, or at the higher level. So we are getting into some important support resistance levels. So we'll have to watch this out. So neutral to um, slightly bullish bias here for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, Aussie has not done a whole lot. It's still trading in this range that it has been stuck um, stuck in for quite some time and right now it's struggling with this immediate support level here and it has been trading in for the last six weeks or seven weeks here it's been stuck in this range so right now overall bias still neutral no real trend here if it breaks through the support level at 0 0.7670 next target would be the low here 0 0.7550 um, however because it has struggled here it could just do one of these and it's done this previously here went up so we have the similar setup again so we could see a bounce off of this right now my bias is neutral i'm looking for either a move within the range between 78 85 and 76 70 so this range or if it breaks down we're looking for a move back towards 0 0.7550 overall though both of these are still it's still a range bound move so neutral bias for Aussie dollar. Uh, New Zealand dollar here, this one as well, it's been stuck in this range for last several weeks. Now we do have a bullish candle close, but just like this one here, it hasn't gone through the resistance yet. So neutral bias here. I'm looking for a potential retest of 0 0.73, and then we may see a move back into the range here. So this one as well, stuck in a range. So bias here is neutral. So this is the range uh, 73, 0 0.7300, 0 0.7100. 0 .7 so just expecting a sideways move here. Dollar cat here, this one also seems stuck here in this very, very narrow range for the last three weeks. It's been here. Um, now we do have a neutral candle close. It failed to break through the support. So we may get a move back um, up here again. So in this case, first target would be 1.2150 and then 1.2200. So bias here is neutral as well. Uh, Euro pound here, this one is also um, looking a bit sideways here. Um, at this point, neutral to bearish bias, next target is 0 0.8530. And only if it continues lower, then we will look for it. But right now we do have to uh, watch out for the support level here um, at 0 0.8575. If it fails, 
we are back into the range once again. But right now, it looks like this move here could get filled. So neutral to bearish bias here. Next target is 0 0.8530 and then 0 0.8500. Uh, Euro Swiss franc here, this one seems to be struggling with the support. It's been in a very, very narrow range here. So at this point, um, just looking neutral here, um, we, may see, we may see a move all the way back into 1.1060, even potentially into 75. But uh, overall, not looking like any sort of a strong trend here. So this one as well is neutral. Uh, pound Swiss franc looks like it wants to move higher, but the problem here is the resistance level it's pushing into, but the candle that's closed into the resistance is looking quite strong. If it manages to go through, then essentially we're looking for a move all the way back. So this inefficient move here will get filled, but first we have to be cautious here because of this strong support resistance level here, it could fail. Uh, so watch out for it. So right now, we uh, this is neutral to bullish. Once it goes through uh, 1.2785 level, then it turns bullish and we will aim for the higher levels. So right now, neutral, by, neutral to bullish, uh, 1.2900 is the first target. And then if it goes through, uh, through this one here, then we will aim for 1.3080. Uh, dollar Swiss franc here, this one's looking a little neutral right now. Price did go into the support here and then bounced off. So last three weeks, it has been stuck in this range. So I'm looking for a range bound move here as well, unless something specific comes in that gives it direction. Right now, it lo it's looking rather uh, sideways here. Uh, so looking for a move towards 0 0.9050 and then a potential turnaround back into the range and 0 0.8930 will be the lower bound of the range that I'm watching. Uh, pound yen here, yen has been taking a hit and right now everything is looking bullish. Next target here is 156.60 and then 158. So right now bias is bullish. Uh, for pound yen. Euro yen, this one as well, um, looking quite bullish here. And as we can see, prices move through that resistance level here. This was an important support resistance level. It has bounced or it has gone through it. Next target is 134.50. Um, and then above that, um, we are into 135.20, so bullish bias here for Euro Yen as well. So in this case, the move I would anticipate would be a bit of a retest and then a further move to the upside. Uh, first target 134.50 and then 135.20. Uh, dollar Yen here, this one also looking a bit bullish. It went through this uh, resistance level here. So next target, um, the first target is 110.25 and then 111. So bullish bias for dollar yen as well. Um, Aussie yen here still trading sideways here. Doesn't quite have that bullishness as other, uh, other yen crosses do. Uh, the candle close here, actually, let me just switch over to a weekly chart. Okay, so this is the range that we are seeing price trade in currently. It hasn't really done a whole lot. It's been stuck in this range. So right now it's holding right above the support at 83.90. Um, so right now basically looking for, we may get a retest of the high at 85.40, uh, but I would look at the entire range here between 83 and 85.40. So I'm just expecting it to be side to stay sideways here. It doesn't have a clear, uh, clear direction at this point. Euro yen, pound yen, those are more have more of a clear direction than this one does. Uh, so right now, uh, neutral bias for Aussie yen. And in terms of our New Zealand yen here, uh, this one did go through the top of the range. It was stuck here for a few weeks here. Now it's made it through the resistance. Now we are looking for higher levels um, all the way from the left here. 
In this case, bias is bullish. Again, watch out for a bit of a back test and then looking for a further move to the upside, 80.30 and 80.75. So bias here is bullish as well. Okay, so CAT yen here as well, um, as we can see, it it was for the last couple of weeks, it was sideways here, but now it's gone through 91.50 is the first target here. And then price is going to come into some strong resistance. So we'll have to watch out for that level. Um, and then above that, only if it continues. So we do have OPEC meetings this week, which could um, really have an impact on all the Canadian crosses. So watch out uh, for that. But bullish bias 91.50 um, and then 92 will be the next two targets here. Um, all right, so moving on to our commodities here, we'll start off with silver. Silver is also stuck sideways here. Let's move, change it to weekly here. Um, so this is where we are. Price is into resistance here. There is a slight bullishness here, not looking, not looking that strong in terms of a trend right now. So in this case, um, I will look for a retest of 28.70. And only if it goes through that, then we will aim higher. But right now, neutral to bullish bias, 28.20 and 28.70 will be the next two targets. Uh, gold here, gold is looking better. Now it is into some strong resistance where it is currently at 1912. So this is where the resistance is coming from. Um, if it manages to go through overall, still looking bullish here. And next target for this one. So next target is 1932. And then we will follow this more on the on the daily here, but looking bullish at the moment. Um, 91.30 and then potentially 90, uh, 1960. So 1932 and 1960 will be the next two levels to watch. Um, oil here. Oil has also been a bit uh, range bound here. So we did see price go higher, but it still hasn't been able to go through the resistance here. It's been stuck in this range for several weeks right now. Um, it is into some strong resistance here, so watch out. So I would say still neutral bias. And if they start increasing production levels, then we could see it come back into the range again. So neutral bias, neutral to slightly bullish bias here for oil. Only if it goes through this level, then we will um, target higher levels. But at this point, the first challenge would be for it to go through 67.80. Uh, copper here, copper has had an interesting week here as well. Uh, we saw the bounce off of the support level here, and now we are back into these levels again. So I'm expecting a move back towards 4.75. So bullish buys for copper here. Uh, Bitcoin here, Bitcoin hanging around that 35,000 mark here. Um, in terms of our weekly move here, this doesn't look that great. In the daily, this doesn't look that look that great. Basically, uh, right now it's range bound, but uh, we may see the price drop further. Uh, so if it goes through here, we could see a drop. So watch out for that. So I'm going to say neutral to bearish, but we may just if it stabilizes here, uh, then we may see a move like this. It may just hold on. The concern would be if it holds on here and then starts to push lower, we could see it go all the way into the 20,000 mark. And that's where it would be a little, um, which means, yeah, we would have to see how it balanced here for a bit before that this big move. So we could see something like this. And uh, that's why we'll monitor it and see for it to big turn any sort of bullish at all, we'll have to see a breakthrough. 42,500 um, and it does not look like it's anywhere near that. Um, so we'll have to see a push through this level and then we're likely to see, see a stabilization here. Right now, the way it's looking, we are likely to see more of a, this type of a thing. So here, and then we could see a drop. So watch out. 
Uh, but if it stabilizes above this um, this level, though, then there is chance that it could go higher at this point. So a lot of volatility right now in the crypto space. Uh, so bias here is neutral to bearish for Bitcoin. S&P 500 here, this one's still looking bullish here. It wants to push higher. And in this case, a target would be the high at 40 to 50. And we could potentially see a move higher because it's stabilized here long enough. Um, so it could shoot through. So if the stock market starts going up, we could see Bitcoin follow with that. Uh, but uh, again, Bitcoin has its own problems right now. This one, however, looking bullish, 40 to 50 is the first target. NASDAQ here, over the last few days, NASDAQ has been sideways. But overall, it is it does have that bullishness in it. And in this case, the next target would be 13,900 and then above that the high of 14,000 so bullish bias for Nasdaq right now um, and then Dow Jones here as well this one has also been holding up um, so right now it's trying to push higher next target is 38,000 sorry 34,800 and then 35,000 so bullish bias here as well uh, DAX here, again, all of these don't have a strong, strong momentum, but they're holding on to the highs, uh, which means we could see a further move higher. So for this one here as well, again, not a strong move, but it's hanging out. It's hanging on there. So uh, bullish bias, I would say neutral to bullish. Next target would be 15,600. So neutral to bullish here. Uh, FTSE, this one doesn't seem to have much of a trend here. So looking at the weekly, it's just sideways. So I am going to basically look for a move between 7,100 and 6,900, just sideways here. It's kind of stuck in a range at the moment. And last one here, Nikkei. Nikkei also pushing higher. So the stock markets um, have been pushing higher. The concern with Nikkei in particular here would be that we are into resistance right here at 29,000. So if it doesn't go through, then we are looking for a drop here. So at this point though, still has that bullish uh, bullishness to it. So neutral to bullish bias, next target is 29,700. All right, so that's it for today. So you guys have a wonderful trading week and I'll be back with the daily analysis on oh, well, tomorrow. Bye for now.